Thursday, October 17, 2013, in New Brunswick, Canada, indigenous protesters refused to comply a judge injunction, ordering them to surrender the siege of SWN equipment store. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police moved in, fully armed, 200 men strong, arresting many elders. Pictures of agents in camouflage with automatic assault weapons and dogs flow through Twitter and other social media websites. Southwestern Resources Canada is a Houston-based energy company working on shale gas extraction using fracking, a system that injects water and chemicals to the ground to harvest gas. Scientists and activists warn that such procedure can contaminate the ground and the water supply. The company had been conducted seismic testing with the drugs detained inside the compound by the activists. Miles Howie, a reporter for the media co-op, was among those arrested. He published, We are currently surrounded by about 75 cops, all guns drawn. Several are in military fatigues. Rubber bullets have been fired in the woods. Molotovs were thrown earlier from warrior side. Currently still in standoff. The Globe and Mail reported that after the protesters refused to disperse, the police used tear gas and rubber bullets. RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, reported 40 arrests. This is the statement in the RCMP website. The New Brunswick RCMP has arrested at least 40 people for various offenses including firearms offenses, uttering threats, intimidation, mischief, and for refusing to abide by a court injunction on Route 134. The Real News spoke to Pamela Ross, one of the activists that had been at the blockade. This has been a peaceful uh, protest all along, and uh, people are... Um, people have been misled um, on what the whole warrior society and what warriors, First Nations warriors are in the first place. Um, you know, they're, they're protectors um, of the people. So um, that's why the warriors were the first people arrested, because they are willing to put themselves out in front of everybody else. Everyone's protesting because um, um, the government of New Brunswick... Uh, it, Originally, the Liberal government of New Brunswick introduced uh, shale gas um, and fracking to New Brunswick, and people were totally against it. And, and, and then an election came around, and the Conservative government was very critical um, in criticizing the Liberal government, you know, about this shale gas. And a lot of people voted for them because they thought, that the conservative government was against it. But the conservative government has turned around and, and they seem to be all for it as well. A live shot was reported, but neither side took responsibility for it. Five police cruisers were set on fire after the initial raid. Images like this one, published in News World YouTube channel, circle around the internet and TV newscast. While it is presumed that Mi'kmaq people did it, until now no evidence has surfaced on to who set the cars on fire. This is a video of the aftermath of the arrest, published by Chris Abbas, an independent reporter working in Toronto with Christian pacemaker teams. She had been following the story. The siege that started on Sunday, September 29, 2013, after months of active non-violent direct action by native Acadian and Anglophone communities, and after years of campaign against shale gas, protesters draw the line. Keep going, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're Don't matter. <coughs> We're not leaving either. 
worth mentioning is Submedia's TV coverage of the blockade. This is part of one of their special reports from the site of the blockade. We have Mi'kmaq, we have Acadians, we have English, so we all came together. That's why we became a unity camp. Before we were like this, we weren't getting along. Till the when they started messing our water, then we became this. This, became this is a video by Chris Saban of Chief Aaron Sock entering the blockade. El Cipoctoc Chief Aaron Sock and several council members were among those arrested on October 17. This marked the end of a blockade maintained for more than two weeks. But it does not end the resistance of the indigenous people and the activists and citizens. After the arrest, demonstrations of people protesting in solidarity were reported by mainstream media as well as social networks. Ontario Provincial Police reported that 30 to 40 First Nation protesters blocked and shut down Highway 6 in southern Ontario, between the communities of Hagersville and Caledonia. Just one day before, speaking in behalf of Queen Elizabeth II, I bear the happy wishes and deep affection of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada. Governor General David Johnson, in the annual speech from the throne in Parliament Hill, Ottawa, pointed at the immense importance raw natural resources have for the Crown and the Commonwealth. Since Canada's earliest days, our economy has been built on our abundant natural resources. Directly and indirectly, the natural resource sector employs 1.8 million Canadians, many in skilled, high-paying jobs. Resource development generates $30 billion annually in revenue that supports health care, education and programs Canadians cherish. Canada's energy reserves are vast, sufficient to fuel our growing economy and supply international customers for generations to come. The Canadian indigenous fight to preserve its resources from industrial exploitation has many similar characteristics compared to those of the South American indigenous. In Colombia, Brazil, Peru and Ecuador, they all advocate for the necessity to balance civilizations' growth and the well-being and preservation of our planet and its biosphere. For The Real News, this is Oscar Leon.